Welcome to the Matt Wilkie Podcast. So, what is asset surveying? Uh, somebody brought this up today, actually. Um, reality is, asset surveying is actually multiple types of business in the sense that anything to do with a building is maintained, repaired, changed, renovated. They're all assets. It can be an asset on the fabric side. Fabric is like windows, doors, and general fabric within the building, you know, carpets, mirrors, that sort of thing. The stuff I normally specialize in is the M&E side, mechanical and electrical. So I do air conditioning, heating systems, lights, uh, electrical services. Um, sometimes get involved in the gas systems, in the pipework, generators, all the big stuff. Um, because we normally deal with things like hospitals, clinics, data centers, banks, um, large group companies. Like, for example, I've done AXA Insurance, I've done Siemens Turbines, I've done uh, Shell Oil. But literally, it's large buildings. Generally, we don't do too many small buildings because it's a very expensive process. But at the same time, on a small building, you normally find that if something breaks, you just get somebody to come and fix it. Where if you're dealing with large chains, uh, for example, betting shops, um, they're also done because one of the big things you find with Large changes often have things they've neglected, um, like gas servicing and other bits and pieces, um, because they have so many buildings, they aren't 100% what they actually own, especially if you've had a merger. Um, for example, mobile phone shops, which is another company um, entity that we deal with. Now, what happens with all the data? All we do is we gather all the information relating to say an air conditioning unit, how old it is, what model it is, what capacity it is, how much does it cost to replace it, what people do we need to actually maintain it, what is the recommendations, depend on its environment, because you may go with SFG20, or you may go with manufacturer's compliance, or if it's in a medical facilities, it could be down to the NHS own standards, because they write things their own way. It all depends on the environment. If you're doing prison services, they have another set of specifics because also it's to do with access. You know, for example, if you were changing an air conditioning unit in a normal office, it's not really a problem for access. But if you were going to a medical facility or a prison facility, you may find that getting access is an absolute nightmare and that has to be adapted within the contract. So all these things are built up based on the business. So what you have is, say for example, we go, okay, an air conditioning unit, due to its environment, it's gonna take twice as long as normal. So that then gets built into the business model, which will tell you how many hours you need for engineers. But also, you know, it's an air conditioning unit, so you need air conditioning engineers, but you may have chillers in the building, so you need a HVAC engineer. And th this is the thing. It builds up a picture of what people you need, how long you need them for, and how much they'll cost. But also, if you've got equipment that's brand spanking new, the cost of the maintenance is cheaper than stuff that's on its last legs. Because if it's on its last legs, the maintenance is higher because the failure rate's higher. But also, you should actually be changing everything before it gets to the point where everything's due to fail. That's where we do life cycle modeling. That's what I do. I put all this stuff together to put a real value in contracts. Now, I know some people have, well, we, we know which village people um, assume that I may actually be running a cleaning contract business of some description. You can't actually leave a cleaning contract for this length of period. Um, there probably won't be any work when I went back. But also you have to bear in mind that I've got no experience in cleaning. The companies I work for, um, they're hard services. I don't know if you know the difference between hard and soft services. But if you take, for example, uh, SSS, 
they're a cleaning business. Uh, SSS or ISS? They're a cleaning business. Carillion's a hard services business. Cleaning, cleaning isn't their forte. Um, they are construction. They are maintenance. They generally don't get involved in cleaning. It's, it's not what they do. They build roads. They build airports. They build big projects. But also they maintain large buildings such as hospitals, large contracts, contracts such as RBS Bank. But also they build hospitals as well as part of PFI projects. So that's, that's basically it. The values I put together with all the information I have create PPMs, which are the, the, they're basically the periodic maintenance for whatever the building is and whatever the equipment is. But on top of that, you've got the, the fact that you have a reactive budget. That's analyzed through looking at the help desk data because you know the number of calls per day and the average cost per job and the time that's took per engineer. So you can evaluate the true cost of a contract. So when you turn around and go, and somebody goes, well, it, the contract's um, only X, I can actually turn around and say, well, it's either over or under that because I analyze the data. I put the data together. Um, currently, I'm working on NHS projects. I simply analyze all the data, cost all the equipment, um, everything from a distribution board right through to very large plants such as generators, um, entire distribution systems for hospitals, entire nurse call systems, fire alarm systems, gas systems, uh, gas suppression systems, fire alarm systems, fire, alarm, uh, fire extinguishers, how many smoke detectors in the building. That's what I do. That is asset management. That is asset surveying, quantifying everything in a building, knowing its age, condition, likeliness of failure, access issues, etc., etc. Thanks for listening. I forgot to add, if you're wondering, you know, because there's a few village idiots about at the moment trolling like no tomorrow, is Matt telling the truth? Uh, the first thing is, I'm not really fussed if you do, but it would be nice to actually show these people that the stuff they're lapping up from an internet troll um, is putting egg on their face with the stupid comments. But anyway, John Parrish has recently worked with me on the NHS. When I say recently, in the last couple of months. Uh, when I went out to a man, Philip Patrick and Eric Cable came with me. Two other expats that have been in the Philippines a long period of time. There is plenty of people that have known me for a long period of time from the Asset Surveying Venture. I'm very, very well known for the Asset Surveying stuff. Because I've been around for nearly a decade. It's the stuff I get up to. It's the stuff that is A, a good money owner. But B, it allows me to have some flexibility. Here I am working a full-time job at the moment from the from spain from home because i can do it remotely that's the lifestyle i want that's what i want i'm two minutes from the beach i can walk down the beach anytime and enjoy life i can do half a day go down to the beach sit on the beach for a couple of hours come back and do the rest of my uh shift i've got the life i want i'm happy i'm content making good money and the worst case scenario is this contract may come to an end once we've got to the end of these hospitals and nothing else comes through from this contract but there is always new ones contracts renew on a different time frame some are five years some are seven some are three some are eight it all depends how the contracts have been set up but one thing is for sure there is always contracts there. There is no shortage of work. There's no shortage of finding work. In fact, the hardest bit is actually finding work as a contractor. Um, working full-time is no problem. 
I've had three job offers uh, with good salaries for the UK in the last week. Why? Because not many people do it well. That is the reality. Not many people do it well. Many people can do it, but doing it right is a different thing. Thanks for listening.